y'all, it's Tammy with Color Valley Cooks, and today we're going to make this beautiful chuck roast in a braiser. First thing we're going to do is we're going to salt it with some kosher salt. And I'm going to use, this is um, seasoned pepper, and it is a uh, colorful, coarse ground. And so I'm going to put this pepper on it. It's nice and big. Put a little bit of roasted garlic on there. And I'm going to flip it over. Do the same thing all over again. That's my fingers off. Salt. Kosher salt. Pepper. And a little bit of roasted garlic. Now we're going to turn our uh, pan on preheat while we chop up a few vegetables. We're going to let that start getting hot. We've got some rosemary. We've got garlic. We've got onion. We're going to chop up in just larger pieces. Celery. carrot. While this is preheating, I'm going to put in our parsley and basil and just heat it up a little bit to bring out that flavor. And then I'll probably pour it out onto here and we'll add it later. But we're just going to let that get a little bit warm. All I'm doing is heating the dry um, seasonings just to bring out the flavor a little bit. Next, I'm going to put these in a bowl and we'll start searing the chuck roast. You can really start to smell it now once it starts heating up. It smells good. I'm going to turn off the eye so I don't get burned. And then Put these in here. Bring our pan back to a nice heat. Put in our olive oil. Good bit of it. Which I didn't even have to do because I got this butter over here. I guess it's fine. Okay, now I'm going to take some flour and just dust the, the meat a little bit with it. I'm going to go ahead and flip it. Turn it and get the sides as well. When I sear one, I like to get all the, I like to get the sides too. For what's the point, right? Okay. I'm gonna move it around a little bit, make sure all my oil gets underneath it. Then we're just going to let it sit in there. If that wasn't nonstick, of course, I couldn't do it that way. We're going to brown it 
it on all the sides and even the sides of the roast. I'll pick it up and we'll brown it. So we'll put up our sifter. You go ahead and start putting your stuff up while you're browning it. You can look, we keep our sifter up here in the cabinet so that it's nice and handy. Uh, keep flour in it. And that way, when I want to use it, it's there. These are freeze-dried herbs that I like to use by Lighthouse. Parsley, basil. I have quite a few different kinds. I really love the salad blend. It's really, really good. I'm going to put just a little bit of butter in here to make this taste good. But I don't really want it to burn. I think I'm just going to spread some on the top of the roast. I didn't do that to the other side, but you can do it to the other side as well. Instead of using the olive oil. But I wouldn't put butter in the pan because the pan is larger than the meat, it's hot, and it would really smoke up the house, okay? So you want to put enough butter on there just where it's going to be searing and not um, where it's the edges of the pan are. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. I don't think it should be ready. You can look, it's got a really nice sear on it. So we'll do this side with the butter and I'll let you see the two different, how it looks. Butter versus olive oil. We've still got a little butter we could use on the sides if we wanted to, but I doubt I will. We'll just throw that in while we're braising it for flavor. Can I put in a couple of peppers, Chris? What do you mean? I mean, can I put in a couple of peppers? The little bell pepper thing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've got some little sweet peppers. I'm going to go ahead and open these up and um, let them be getting brown. While we're searing the roast. Bring those on here. And one more. This is just to get some flavor. And I'm letting the season all go in because we're actually going to strain everything off of it uh, for our broth later. Once it cooks in this for a while. What kind of pan is this? This is a uh, braising pan. It has a rubber top lid which is wonderful it's a master class brand which i found at marshall um, it is the finish on it is a non-stick ceramic stone coating there's the butter side it's pretty now we're going to stand it up on its side and let the sides get a little bit brown and while we're doing this we could throw in a little bit of our onion because we won't need as much as our pan anymore to get the sides brown. Right, 
I'll rotate it. While I'm holding that, I'm going to stir these peppers up a little bit. Should be getting nice and green on the bottom. Just like they wouldn't have ugly. It's going to be good. Give it a good flavor. It's almost like grilling them, really. When you get it on this high heat. There we go. So we'll take things off to the side. And in here. And I'm gonna rotate this way. Right. And it's a chuck roast, so it's already starting to want to come apart. Chuck roast is a good uh, cut of meat. It's nice and fatty. Got a lot of fat running through it. It's going to be delicious in a brazier. This brazier will have all that fat rendered down, but nice and sticky and delicious. And I think I'm ready. So here we go. We got the onion around it, some of the peppers. We're going to put in our carrot. Our celery. And our garlic also went in with our herbs. Whoa. Our garlic and herbs. Are we going to put in the chicken stock? Well, this is actually chicken broth, which is fine. We're going to take a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I'd say a couple of tablespoons. We'll add just a dollop of olive oil. And we're going to use the rest of this butter because we have it and it's out and we may as well. Okay, this is going to cook for a couple of hours, two or three hours, until it's tender. Until we drain the broth off of it and uh, render it down, the, the juice down. So, um, we're going to add a good bit of water. So, you're going to want to put your veggies in and put enough water to come right to the top of the roast. You're going to put it on low, you're going to cover it, and leave it on low. Now this is a large eye, I'm going to show you how big it is. So if you don't have one this big at home, you need to, uh, you might want to put it up on like a, a, a little bit higher of a simmer. Because you can see how much flame is under there. This is a big pot though, a big, a brazers are pretty big. so. I need a little bit bigger ice. So we're gonna let this thing simmer for a couple of hours with the lid on. It'll keep a lot of the moisture in there. Okay. All right, this has been cooking for a while, so we're going to try to flip it upside down before I reduce it. Let's see if we can. Okay, it's good and done. We're going to have to drain this, and uh, we'll reduce it in just a minute. Okay, y'all. This looks too good for me to throw away parts of it. I'm definitely going to eat these carrots. So I'm taking out the carrots. That one actually had some a rosemary stick under it. I might eat this pepper. I don't want the celery, and I don't want the rosemary, because it's not really, you know, something that you would enjoy eating. But we'll get out the good stuff. Put it on our plate. 
And one little rosemary leaf ain't gonna hurt nobody either. I still want to have a bunch of it. There's one, see it? I'll get it out there. Okay. Carrot and carrot. And we are ready to do something with this rice. What you doing with the pan, baby? I'm going to use this bowl because I used it to make uh, veggies a while ago, and I'm going to put my meat in it. Is that what I need to do? Yeah, I am. I'm going to put my meat in it, and then I'm going to drain the juice into the meat, and then pull, put it right back in the pot. That way we'll get all the nasty stuff out of it. That we don't want to eat. That was just in there for flavor. There's a stick. We'll get it out. And I'll see one other thing. Okay. So we're going to pour this through. Yes. What happened to my... I keep moving out of the blind. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna push this down and we're gonna let it run through here and get rid of um, what we don't need. Make sure you take the, turn the eye off so that you don't get burned. Just a little bit. Look how nice they clean that pan is. I love it. Love it. Love it. And then you can take your spoon and get all of your broth out of here. Okay. I'm just going to set this right here for now where my carrots are. And we're just going to take our meat and put it right back in here. It's good and done. And really, that's pretty much a pan sauce already. It's already reduced. I'm going to taste it. Oh, my Lord. It is plenty strong and reduced. Taste it, Daddy-O. So what do you want to do? It's good. It's good, just like it is. All right, let me tell them. Since I put flour on the meat before I started seared it, had some oil in the pan, and of course this had some fat in it. This pan sauce is so good. It does not need to really be reduced anymore. It's a delicious flavor. I'm not going to do anything else to it. If you taste it and it's rich, this is very rich, very delicious. You can see it doesn't need a thing. If you want to add some salt or pepper, do it at this point. But I really believe that this is perfect and we don't need to do anything else to it. So we're just going to serve the roast just like this with the sauce over the top of it. You can see it's pulling apart real easy. And we're going to taste it. It's delicious. It's delicious. Yummy yum. Thanks for watching Color Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. This is going to be absolutely delicious, and if we have any left over, we'll be having a, an amazing roast beef sandwich. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching Color Valley Cooks. Love y'all. Bye.